For the safety and security of all parties concerned, some scenes have been censored. We like to talk to everyone on the streets, those beggars on the side of the road. They see everything that happens around them. They know who the criminals are, they know what to look out for. Where do those guys, where are they staying? I must look with me. I make a plan for you. Roll over, empty out your pockets, come. Put your hands on your back! Oh, oh, oh. All of these taxi guys carry guns, knives, so at any one moment here, yeah, someone's going to get shot or stabbed. So we snuck out the office uh, to come and practice some shooting. None of the bosses know that we're here. Don't worry, we are here now, so all you're going to hear is pa, 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 pa. We planned a special ops this evening. We had a bit of trouble in our complexes out in Centurion. They've been provoking, stealing our guards, so I've got my team ready tonight. We've had heavy floods these last few weeks and it's caused unsettling through the area. You gonna mug me? I might gotta mug you. Is that gorgeous or what, eh? And I believe I can run the decent marathon. Download Veli now. So tonight, Justin and myself head to the Midrand Kalami area. Um, there's been a few crimes, uh, quite a lot of crime in that, those areas at this point in time. So we think that it'll be good for us to stand off in that area because that's probably where the panics are going to come from. So we've got a truck just parked off in, over here. I can't see anybody in the truck. What the hell is the truck doing there? Either they're movers or they're involved in crime. And this is just too suspicious. These guys could be loading up someone's house. Okay, this truck's very interesting. It doesn't have a rear registration. So my suspicions weren't wrong. Let's go see where this mother is. Hey, open or not? Open. Back here. Empty. Yeah. See, the problem with this is they could be using it as a getaway vehicle with a lot of stuff. You never know. Well, that's what exactly what it is. We have a look in the back of the truck, and it's brand new and empty inside. So we start investigating. We call it into the police. Midrand, corner of and a corner of There's an abandoned truck with no registration. No number plates. Please get the police to come and check it out immediately. At this point, we hand it over to the police. Um, they they do the investigation and see where this vehicle comes from. I'm the only person who's suspicious of this truck. Um, it raises no suspicion because it's a truck with a trade plate and new number plate, no number plates. So as far as anybody's concerned, it's just uh, somebody owns a truck and they've parked it outside here. But it's been here for three days, hasn't moved. Yeah, it could be a tonnage problem that the complex won't let it in, so it belongs to someone here in the complex. I don't know, would you park a brand new truck here? There's probably cops already on it. Who knows? Who knows? You know, being in this game, you're always observant of your surroundings, and straight away I spot the drug dealer, and he's picking up or dropping off right outside one of our estates. Okay, see that car there with the emergencies on? He's walked in towards that house over there. He's walked behind the house. Yeah, we decide to follow him around and basically just creep him out a little bit so that he doesn't deal outside our complex anymore. Let's make him shit himself, see what happens. Don't panic, don't panic. Don't accelerate yet. Watch, he's gonna do a quick turn into there. I want to go in behind the taxi. Funny how he was going straight and he could make a quick duck. We follow him for a long time. We follow him all around. Okay, watch the erratic driving now. He starts trying to lose us, but uh, he's really freaked out about the situation. <laughs> Don't stop to the stop street. Okay, now he's putting foot. So he's going to try to get around the corner and then turn into one of the roads that you can't see. He just went through the stop again. Guy is going for it. Okay, Pitchy runs the red light. Oh, quick turn left. 
Oh, missed the turn. Oh, this is called scaring a drug dealer. Just make it a dodgy right. Dodgy right. So we've been following him around for about 10 minutes and uh, eventually now he's, he's really nervous and he, he pulls into a very dodgy street where I can see there's a couple of his buddies hanging around. Uh, he's trying to take us into that air, into there. In the interest of public safety, we decide not to have a gunfight in the street and uh, we carry on with our job as normal. How's it got free? Sorry, come out of the way. Right, perfect, cool, you're on our way. Thank you, bye. There's a panic coming out of a, one of our complexes there. Did you get what he's wearing? A white shirt, blue jacket. Which direction did he go? He's gone along the fence. What is he doing? Quick check. He's trying to cut the he's fence. Trying to cut the fence, yeah. The fence has a radio transmitter attached to the fence, and that sends a signal straight to our control room. So when we get uh, that signal, we understand that someone's trying to get inside. So Justin and I are heading towards the complex, and we see this guy running. Hey! What are you doing here? So Justin manages to take the guy down. He's way ahead of me, so I decide to jump back in the car and meet him where he is. So we got a suspect. He was playing with a fence over that side of the road, jumped over the wall of this empty, vacant plot here, and uh, we came in, Justin spotted him, Justin pounced on him. He looks like he was acting alone, but we're gonna question him now while we wait for the backup to arrive. So this guy was trying to get into our estate, but obviously he didn't manage to. He realized that he had set off the alarm when he tampered with the fence, so he was just trying to run away at this point. Not much we have on him, attempted uh, breaking, um, but uh, at least we took him down and stopped the crime from happening. We like to talk to everyone on the street. Uh, we like to turn them into informants if we can. Those beggars on the side of the road, they see everything that happens around them. They know who the criminals are, they know what to look out for. So we try and make informants out of these guys. So we're coming up here to this on the road. I spoke to him a while ago. He said that he's got some intel for us of who's breaking into one of our areas down the road. So we're hoping to go speak to him and see what we can get out of him and hopefully put a stop to it. OK, you're going to call him, Jan. Yeah, park on the road there. I want to ask you a few things. I know there's... What? What? When we find these guys there, we question them. They need to know that we are on operation. We're there patrolling all the time. We're questioning people and we, we're finding out what's going on. There's some guys that are living around here that are doing house breaking. I'm telling you there's something there. Yeah. That one is a threat one. Yeah, there's a few of them. There's four or five of them. They're doing house breaking. Where do those guys, where are they staying? How much you give it me? Make a plan for you. Show me, then we talk. I want to see what good information you give me, then we can talk money. You know what? Some Shangani, ne? I'm telling you. Shangani, that one. Where is that one? He's always going by this down. robot. Ah, he's going there. Yeah, down. And what's that man? See that cars, man? What's that, that man doing? He's making the trouble somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. I don't know. Yeah? Me, I don't know. I don't care. You know his name? Shangani. Shangani? Yes. Is that his name? We find out, we get a lot of information and we find out who's doing the crime. Maybe offer them a little bit of a reward and a bit of an incentive. So he's given us a bit of information about another guy who's involved in a lot of the crime in the area. Smash and grabs, house breakings, he says. We don't know how true it is yet, but we will be back. We'll come find this guy that he's talking about and he's more than willing to help us find the guy, obviously for a price. Oh, 
So my friend and I are on a on a bit of a ride, and uh, we're enjoying ourselves. And Rudy gets into a bit of an altercation with the taxi driver who tries to ride him off the road. You know these taxi associations believe they own the roads and they believe they can do anything to civilians, and it, it's not the case. A taxi driver is sometimes a motorcyclist's worst nightmare. They sometimes go through red traffic lights. They ride on the hard shoulder of the road. Guys and bikes on the road, no one has respect for them, uh, especially taxis. Uh, people die every, every day on bikes. You know, I understand, I always let a taxi driver in front of me. I understand there's a whole lot of people in his cab that have to get to work. But when they start endangering lives, that's when I lose my cool. When I arrive on the scene, I see there's a commotion. I see there's uh, a bunch of taxi drivers surrounded Rudy. Uh, the, the situation looks volatile, so I get involved and try mediate. All of these taxi guys carry guns, knives, so at any one moment here, yeah, someone's going to get shot or stabbed. Before this erupts into massive taxi violence, we've got to get the team out of there safely. It's a risky situation where you don't know how many of these guys are going to stop. They actually they stick together. So you, you in there, you in the middle, and more taxis are stopping. It's these guys can pull out a gun, they can stab you. So you've got to calm the situation down, get in there, and get out. Get in the box, it's off now. They're coming with reinforcements, yes, they're going to start shooting. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Taxi violence is a daily occurrence in South Africa. It's basically a mafia organization. My advice to anyone using the roads, don't start a fight with the taxis. If they cut you off, just forget about them, let them go along their way. It's not gonna help you to fight them. You don't have a backup team like I do. Very happy with the response unit. They got there on time. They helped us to defuse the situation very quickly. Nobody from our team got hurt. I'm proud of you guys. So we snuck out the office uh, to come and practice some shooting. None of the bosses know that we're here. What's that? They went practicing without us. It's come to my attention that Trevor, Duran, and Justin have uh, been visiting the gun range for some sneaky practice before they have to challenge the bosses. So we know we're going to the range soon and it's a big competition. So we had to sharpen up on it. We've got to make sure that we know what we're doing and we're hitting bullseye. All the practice in the world is not going to help them. Coming for you, Zane. <laughs> Coming for you. I'm a great shot, eh? I'm actually, I'm actually the best shooter in the company. It's crazy. Trevor shoots blanks. And I've heard it. <laughs> Rumor on the street. <laughs> Don't worry, we are now. So all you're going to hear is... Pa, 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 pa. So guys, just remember safety rules. Gun always aimed on safe range. Safety first. And a loser buys lunch. I'm such a great shot. Most people shoot between five and 10. I take it all the way back to 20. I see suspects running. It's a race! I'm actually happy that they're practicing. Uh, I need them on the range. I need them sharp and ready for action. OK, everyone gets a practice shot at the bottom there. Where? Bottom circle. Yeah, big circle. Everyone gets a practice shot just to get your eyes in. And then we'll go play a, a cadence. So you go one, two, three, four. These guys have to be 100% on top of their game when it comes to safety. Two, they need to be pinpoint accurate when they're shooting. We're going against criminals with high-powered AK-47 rifles. If my guys can shoot, we drop a suspect with one shot, doesn't matter what he's got. Lacquer, not bad. 
terrible. Okay, go, Justin, stand up. Not bad. Lacquer, not bad. Better than Justin's. <laughs> yeah, we do this uh, cadence drill. So we try to do it as, as fast as we can. Shoot one, two, three, four, and then try to get as closest to it. It prepares you for moving targets and if you're shooting at multiple suspects. What's it? Quick. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Quick! Quick! Why are you running? Sorry, the guy would have ran away. Shooting, boy. Hey Trev, uh, he's been doing a bit of training, so he's, he's, his shooting's really improved over the last three years and he's come a long way. So it's just a bit high-low, just trying to overcompensant. Uh, my trigger control's good, shoes are pretty good. He does a lot of sneak shooting, I call it, because uh, he likes to shoot his mouth a lot. If Zane shot, the paper still would have been new and we could have used it at another time. If you're going to shoot your mouth off, you better be able to back yourself up. It went all right. Uh, obviously, need a lot more practice, but we'll be back, and we'll be back before we go for the competition with Zane. But not bad. Duran is a new young gun. He's lang keen to get get into the flow of things, get into the mix. Um, he's been doing a bit of training. And if we don't stay sharp on the range, we won't be sharp on the street. But yeah, Justin, uh. hit the target once. Where are you aiming? I told you I need practice. Where the f are you aiming? You're aiming at the top. You're supposed to shoot the bottom things. I think I'm going to have to start sorting him out, bringing him down to uh, planet Earth. OK, wait. I'm skewed there, guys. People always make up s***. <laughs> yeah, not only does our Night Court team like to fight crime, we always like to lend a helping hand to actually help the less fortunate. We've had some floods recently, you know, the water's welcome, but it's really affected us in, in certain areas. We're on our way to Alex, the team for more settlement. Uh, we've had heavy floods these last few weeks and it's caused unsettling through the area. The floods were, were terrible, washed down their houses. I mean, and these guys have to work in the day, they don't even have a chance to fix their houses. People are being relocated to live, their houses have been washed away, a few people have lost their lives. So we're just going to go see where we can give a helping hand. We feel that we have to go into the streets and we, if we can help someone, if we can pull a vehicle out of the water, if we can get do something, you know, it's, it's definitely part of our job as human beings, as, as South African protectors. Is there currently a search on for a three-year-old girl that was unfortunately washed away? in the floods, uh, she hasn't been located yet. It's a very sad story, but everyone's still trying to find her and hopefully we can locate her to get closure for the family. A lot of our informal settlements are in low-lying areas, um, right on these river systems. The sad thing is they build uh, these shacks and stuff during winter, so where there's no rainfall. And then as soon as the summer rain comes and it comes and it washes away all these shacks along the, the riverbed, and uh, the sad thing about it, everyone's trying to get closer to the river because it's where they wash their clothes. They never foresee the dangers of what can happen staying next to these uh, river systems. We've done awareness campaigns with police and CPF where we come and walk along these river beds and we uh, hand out pamphlets. We even have a thing called Domestic Watch whereby uh, we take community members in, we go through all crime scenarios with them, what's happening. But, you know, unfortunately, so that they, you know, they don't do anything about it until it's too late.
Aj, od ľudí, od ľudí sa kvôli. Aj? Od ľudí, da. Ja, ale to je nejaký ľudí, to. Ja, ale to je nejaký ľudí. In this in this instance, um, the cameraman were there filming us. We're not watching the cameraman, and some bugger tried to run and steal the camera. I mean, where, where, do you, where do you find these guys? These guys definitely had a jump on us. Their car was running. This guy came out, grabbed that camera. He was gone. The time we reacted, jumped in our vehicles, the schools were coming out, there was traffic, taxis. He was driving a car that blends in. There's lots of them and they disappeared off into Alex. We seem to have lost them. Yeah, he has a school right here. Look at all the kids. The last thing you want to do is injure an innocent kid while giving chase to someone. It's an unfortunate, thankless job that we've, we've got. You go there to help, then you've got a few opportunistic criminals that linger around there because they know that people are coming to help and that they're easy targets because your focus is not on crime, your focus is on helping people. We planned a special ops this evening. We had a bit of trouble in our complexes out in Centurion. So I've got my team ready tonight. We had a situation last night where the guys jimmied the fence. They know how to work fences. They know how to get into complexes. So these guys got in and they spotted a polo. They stole the polo. For the last week, we've had uh, four of our guards kidnapped. There's been about, I think about 30 polos stolen in the area, these guys mean business. We believe that these vehicles are going to Mozambique. So we've got to get this gang, we've got to stop this gang immediately. We've got our weapons lined out here. We're kitting our guys out right, we're making sure they've got the right ammo, that the guns load correctly, and they're going to put their weapons on their side. I armed my guys both with a 40 and an AR-50. Because if we're sitting against guys with Heavy armory, we've got to take them down. Guys, we are this evening at one of our complexes. They've attempted four nights in a row. They've got in previously, the guys are armed. They're testing us, they're trying us. So we're coming out here this evening. We're going to flank on both sides. We're going to see if we can catch these guys. What we do is we, we link our transmitters onto the electric fence, which sends signals through to our personal cell phones. Especially when we're on your ops, we know if guys are tampering, which fences, where the fence being tampered with. We can see they tampered with it last night at, at quarter to two, basically. And you can see also that they tampered with it at quarter past 10. So we are waiting for these guys. Hopefully they can trigger the fence so we can go around and get these guys. We've added the one team up to flank the, the left boundary. We're going to flank the right boundary. I like to split into two teams, whereas one team can flank on the north side and the other team flank on the, on the south side. When I flag you, you turn that camera lights off. We can't be seen. We've got to have the eyes on the oaks. OK, guys, let's be ready. We're going to flank on the left-hand side, up the wall like this. Let's be alert, OK? Can we cut the light? It's very hard when you're going into a, a, bushy, a bushy area, open piece of land, because you're going to stick out like a sore thumb. These guys can see you, they know the surroundings. So we've got to cancel out all lights. I mean, I've, I told the cameraman he's got to shut off that light because they've got a gun, they see light, they just have to, sh they just have to shoot towards the lights. Jared? We start moving up this wall, it's a long wall. It's probably about 600 to 800 meters long. We pick up that there's lentils, building material, which the guys have placed against the wall, that they're using to actually climb up, tamper with the fence. So we, we're moving through along this wall. The visibility's poor. I mean, they've put the floodlights totally wrong. We can't see nothing. The guys probably can definitely see us, but we've got to carry on. 
see what they done, young moves. They made a plan. They put it across and then drilled it so they face him. Because remember, this below is too short. The suspects are using these pillars to lean against the wall. It's got nice grip on them, so they climb up the pillar nice and easy. They can tamper with the fence, cut the fence. You can see we've got no visibility here. It's very dark, so they've got as much time as they like to tamper with our fences. There's people probably in the bush, got eyes on us. So we're gonna get back into our vehicles and come through this bush with a bit more light. These guys in the bush are burning cables. Let's go see if we can find them. When we headed out, we seemed to have picked up on a dwelling just in the open there. Quite strange, these guys are burning plastic. We couldn't actually find what plastic or cables, but it looked to me that they're burning copper cables because these guys make a big fire, drop the copper in there, and in the morning they come pull the copper out. This guy's staying here. It's quite scary coming out there. I'd have actually like to take some of the residents to actually see what we can see. You can see the houses from there. You can see the people's TVs. You're monitoring because the land's a bit higher. You can monitor the guards patrol. And that's guys just sitting there burning cables. So this complex is a soft target. So we've just um, got a call from our control room. Yeah, there's an elderly lady here. She's just battling with an alarm system, or her alarm system. So we're just gonna help her set it and just show her how it works. It's nerve wracking for elderly lady be home alone, not be able to arm her alarm. Our visibility is a very important part of our, our job description. Clients call us for a lot of different things as well. I mean, um, people that can't arm their alarms at the last minute and they start panicking. You know, not many companies have a, a call-out system where they can just phone and we dispatch people at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night to come help them on their alarm. Hi, ma'am. Do you believe you just need help with arming your alarm? That's right. I don't know how it is. It went off. Here's the control. See, it says no service. Now, I don't know what... That's... Uh... Might have been struck by lightning. David, I'm here with the lady. Uh, will you conference me with the daughter and then they can explain to me. Thank you, bye. So we have a centralised control room whereby all our panic alarms, all our calls, uh, all come through to uh, via radio transmitter or via telephone. Let's see, that's a control room. Hi, ah, you're speaking to Duranya from Narcot Security. Yes, I'm trying to arm it now and it's not arming. Uh, when you had, you usually just use the remote as well. That's what I was saying now. With the lightning, a lot of the alarms are having problems. So I'll get my technicians to have a look at it and sort it all out. And for tonight as well, we'll get the vehicle to park off here and do a lot of patrols around here just to make sure that she is safe. So we've taken a look at her alarm system. It looks like it was struck by lightning. We've had uh, quite heavy storms recently. It just goes to show we're not responding to violent crime every time, you know. We're just helping people. Uh, Ma'am, can I give you my cell phone number? And yes. please, any, anything, you just phone me. I gave her my, my cell phone number. I stay right up the road, so she must call me anytime. Just there's a panic in street in so we're on our way there. Uh, yeah, just follow us. So the control room's just called us now. There's been a panic pushed in one of our areas. We're responding there to see what's the story. Hopefully the people are safe and if anything happens, hopefully take these guys down. Left here, yeah, Zane. Yeah. Left, left and then right. Yeah. Hi there, how are you doing? Good, thanks. Watch us. There was something on the back perimeter wall there from the people on the other side there. From the other side? Yeah. 
You know, every situation is treated as a death situation or near-death situation. Uh, we need to get there as fast as possible. You know, we get a lot of false alarms in our industry. Uh, that's just part of the job, you know. We can't have a, a situation like the boy that cried wolf and the time we don't respond, the wolf's there, really there and someone gets eaten. So we respond every single time and uh, no matter if it's a hundred times, we're still coming and we make sure we get there as fast as we can. Back in the day when I started working for Night Guard and uh, obviously my, my dad, um, you know, I used to get down and dirty on the streets myself and uh, go wait in the bush and hide and do these patrols. And now that these young guys are coming through, you know, it's important for us. We do a lot of operations with them and a lot of the dirty stuff, but we like to send them on their own and then just monitor their progress to see where they're at. So we've got a bit of intel from one of the that live here that a lot of the harsh breakings that happen in the area are from these guys that are living here. So we're going to go check it out, see if we can speak to them and get some more information. So we sent the boys to a, a tunnel that we've, uh, obviously we keep our eyes on. Um, we found a lot of suspects in these tunnels. We made a couple good arrests there. So we're going to send Mike, Duran and Justin into, uh, into the tunnels and see how they cope. Uh, when we're walking in here, you can just turn your light off. We don't know who's in this bush and uh, this will obviously give away our position. This is the highway right here. Uh, these guys like to hide out in these tunnels and that next to the highway. Once the traffic builds up, they smash and grab. They're off down the side of the highway. Just come sort the stuff out here where no one comes and they move on from here. You can see right by these guys' hiding places, there's residential complexes around. That's why these complexes are getting hit. And that's why we come do the operations, yeah, late at night. Mm, so they come up here. Yeah. These tunnels are used for suspects as a cool off zone. Um, when they've hit a spot, they have to, they would like to get to a location, cool off, and then when the heat's gone, they move again. Uh, we find them in the tunnel if they start shooting at us. Fuck it. Yay! Right here, bottle smash. Now I feel bad. Sweet. Yep. We need to throw a cracker in there. So the rain's coming down really hard. The highway is just a huge puddle of water and um, you know the windscreen wipers can't even work fast enough to get the window the rain off the window we roll into this turned over truck um, the idiot that's driving the turned over truck is just sitting inside the truck uh, doesn't even bother to take out a triangle to warn the cars we nearly smash into the truck so we decide to pull around put our lights on it get some triangles out there and start warning the traffic about this truck before somebody gets killed So this isn't part of our normal day-to-day -day job. This isn't the fun part. We're not catching any criminals. We're not busting anybody. We're uh, just patrolling the streets, helping old ladies fix their alarms. But it is a necessary part of the job. This is actually what uh, makes us uh, who we are, just out there being visible, helping people. Put 
your Mari biscuit on and let's get out of here. I don't even know what to say right now, but... Justin, Justin, Justin. <laughs> the man with a big heart and a big temper and bad driving skills and bad shooting. Yeah, it's <laughs> Park this piece of <laughs> Park this rust bucket. Let's get out of here. I think I'm going to have to take you on a bit of one-on-one -on -one training, brother. It looks like you're failing in a couple of departments. <laughs> Old Justin is trying to keep up to us. He's got his little fancy Fos car rushing to the scene. He hits a pothole. I don't know what the hell he's doing. Bends his mate, gets himself a puncher. Justin, brother, you need to learn how to drive. You're going to catch the criminals all night the way you drive. Let's make her snappy. <laughs> I just heard that night got tape for this tire. I just replaced his tires, not even a thousand case. This is what I get. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff you still need to learn about this. You can't race the old dogs, eh? Not impressed. We've got a guard at a petrol station. He's just hit his panic. Controls contacted us to respond there. A lot of the time it can be guys car jamming or somebody holding up the garage. We don't know the severity of the situation. So we're rolling in hot, we've got Justin in, in front of us, I'll roll in the other end of the petrol station, just to cover sides, we don't know what we're dealing with. Is that right, yeah? So as we roll on scene, we see two guys. Uh, I see my reaction officer there, Ezekiel, busy dealing with these guys, it looks like they're getting a bit frisky. I don't know the severity of the case, we don't know what's going on, so we roll in. What you doing here? What you guys doing here? What you doing here? Hungry for what? We're searching to find exactly what's on them because you never know what these guys are carrying. You try to talk to them, you can get stabbed, you can get shot. Empty out your pockets. Hey, roll over, empty out your pockets, come. Come, empty out your pockets. What's it? What do you want to do with that? Sorry for what? Sorry for what? What are you going to do with this? Fill his leg, Fos. Huh? Fill down his leg. So we take these guys down, we search him, and what do we find? We find a big knife in this guy's pants. Yeah, yeah, what you doing with that? Yeah, use it on yourself. What you doing with that there? I'll use it on yourself. Come on. Okay. Don't talk to like this, like a lamb. Just okay. so search his legs there. You begging with a knife? What happened here with these guys? They came here. And they're harassing the customers, asking for them to buy them food. And I try to tell them, no, don't do this. Sir. This is a garage, this is a private property. Yeah. You don't have to do this. And they told me, no, I'm going to stab you. What a knife, we're going to stab you. That's what they told me. That's when I expressed the panic to call the election to come and help me. No, it's good. You've done a good job, my man. Well done. Thank you. That's what you need to do. Anything like that, they come back here, you push your panic oh, yeah, again. It's not the first time. They're coming here almost every day, every day. These guys come into these petrol stations carrying knives. They approach women, especially women, to ask women for money. And they threaten the woman with a knife and they get away with either their phone or a purse. Where you come from? Where you staying? Cosmo City. Then what the f are you doing here? Cosmo City is far. What are you doing here? Cosmo City is far from here. Hey, did I tell you to turn around? Hey, face the floor. Come in. So when I was questioning these guys, they said they're from Cosmo City, which is very, very far from where they are. I mean, it's two taxis away. These guys shouldn't be here. They're looking for trouble. They should rather be around a center or if they're begging for money, somewhere close to their house, not far like this. You don't come to my places and try to arrest the people. You understand me? And you don't come to my guy that you're going to stab them. You understand me? Do you understand? Or you don't understand? Get down. We've had various cases at this petrol station, so when we respond and we don't take it lightly, we, we come in hard. We've had one of my guards, it was actually a new guard, we just started the site. They walked in, they put a bullet through his head, he was a youngster. He was 22 years old. I mean, they didn't even ask a question, they just walked in. Yeah, because he had a knife on him. 
Harassing the people out now. Put your hand behind your back. Hey, put your hand. Put your hand behind your back. Put your hand behind your back. These guys don't care. They'll come in, they'll just kill your God. They won't even say anything to him. They'll take his life. And I mean, there's nothing worse than seeing your God lying helplessly with a bullet through his head. Where we are right now, it's a, it's a very busy area. There's a casino right across the road. Crime happens everywhere, even in the wealthy areas. Put his come. hand behind his back. Come. Come here. Lay down here. Come. Get Send. off the road. Lay down. Move. Lay down. Come. Send. So the police managed to arrest the one guy because he, he had a knife on him, which is a dangerous weapon. The guard's statement will also help the case. And this guy's going to do a bit of time. You know, this lady's missing her daughter. You guys haven't seen this girl anyway. Three suspects, two ladies. Lady came in from the side door by herself. So this guy up. The minute you roll into your bra, you, you kind of get a feeling like you've walked into a lion's den and all the eyes are on you. We are racing. We've got Dan in the back of a buggy. I'm scared. Oh, <laughs> You won't speak to my guard the way you want to. You, man. Yes, you'd love to. Hey. 